kingdom peace. There are no peace treaties in heaven. There are no peace treaties in heaven. You know what a treaty is? A treaty is two warring parties coming into agreement and saying we're not going to war anymore. You stay on your side of the fence, I'll stay on my side of the fence, and then we'll just live in harmony. They come into agreement with one another. There are no peace treaties in heaven. It was not as if Yahweh sat down with Lucifer and they came up with a plan and said, okay, you stay on earth. I'm going to stay up here, and if, they serve, and if they choose to serve me or if they choose to serve you, we've granted a peace treaty, and we're just going to leave each other alone. That is not what the Word says. It says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness that are in the high places. There are no peace treaties in heaven. You cannot come into agreement with what the enemy says about you and have a facade of peace in your life. Because it will only be a facade. How many of you have ever done that? You just agree with somebody so that the argument will stop. You ever done that? (laughs) I have. I have. Fine. You're right. I don't care. And then all the way out to the garage. She's wrong. (laughs) I would. No, baby. You're always right. Um, Oh, Jesus. I almost got myself in trouble. (laughs) There are no peace treaties in heaven. But there is only victory. There is only victory in heaven. And if the word teaches on earth as it is in heaven, then you should only be walking in victory here on earth. Kingdom peace. What does kingdom peace look like? If you would please turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Verse number seven. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Guard. Let's break that down for a second. This is my first point. I usually like to have like stuff that we can look at, you know what I mean, like slides and things. That was not what happened this week. This week has been a crazy week. This week has been, you ever had one of them weeks? You ever had one of them weeks where you really wish it didn't go the way that it did, but it did, and now you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, like you know, without, without, I don't, I'm not saying this for anybody to feel sorry or nothing like that, but in my wife's transmission started to slip, the the head gasket on the Ram Charger blew, then the motorcycle wouldn't start, and I'm like, oh my God. You ever been there? You ever been there? It's just like, man, why? Am I doing something wrong? And then, then what I don't like is, well, it's the attack of the enemy on your life because you're about to preach about peace and he's attacking your peace. And I sometimes, okay, but other times I think life just happens and we give way too much credit to the enemy. I think, I think one of the biggest con- misconceptions of the church is that everything that goes wrong in your life is not the enemy. Sometimes you got cut off in traffic just because you got cut off in traffic. Sometimes it blew up because I didn't check the stinking radiator. I didn't know if there was enough fluid. It just blew. The water pump gasket was installed wrong when I did it. I don't know. I'm not Nick Upton. I'm not a mechanic. Sometimes things just happen. And it's nobody's fault except for the fact that life is just going on for us. There is no rhyme or reason. But the word guard, the very first definition of guard, when you look it up in the original in this verse, it means to protect by military action or violence to prevent a hostile invasion. Well, that doesn't sound very peace-like. When I say peace, what's the very first thing that comes to your mind? Seriously, when I say peace, what's the thing that comes to your mind? Just calm and tranquil and butterflies and, oh my gosh, I love it. You know what I mean? Like all of that stuff. Like that's, 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 that's what comes to my mind. One of the most peaceful things in the world is when you're duck hunting. Just... 
I know some of y'all like pita, whatever. There's, I don't care. And you're duck hunting, and you're sitting there, and it's cold, and you can see your breath coming through your face mask. And you're all face painted up and everything because your face looks like a white paper plate on there, and you're all hammered out, and it's amazing. And you, and you can see the fog coming off the water, and then all of a sudden you can hear them little, the little chirps in the air, and they start circling your decoys, and it just gets quiet. And you can hear your heart beating. And then they cup up. Them big old mallards cup up right as they're about to come in. And then the second they get right above the decoys, bam, bam. The most peaceful and violent thing I've ever been a part of at the same time. <laughs> and then watching that dead duck float on the water brings me so much joy. <laughs> that's crazy, but I look at that and I think that's what, that's what peace is. We don't have peace unless there's warfare. Somebody somewhere is fighting for the, for the fact that we have peace in this country so that we can do what we're doing today. There is violence happening somewhere on behalf of your peace today. That is kingdom. Revelation lies between in the middle of two seemingly contradictive ideas violent peace that makes no sense the cross that's all you need to know brutal and bloody and horrible the cross without the violence of the cross we have no peace today is this making sense so far I know it might be a little bit different, but I, I, I really believe this is what the Lord gave to me today. It is the violence of who He is on His cross that prevents the hostile invasion of your life. The second definition is to surround. To guard something means to surround it. His peace this morning is the thing that wants to surround who you are. In the middle of your depression, in the middle of your anxiety, in the middle of your worry, in the middle of your fret, in the middle of all your unanswered questions, all your financial difficulties, He wants to hem you in. He wants to surround you with who He is and in His peace. But see, this is the thing. When you're surrounded by something... It's not just to keep the hostile invasion from coming in to stealing your peace. It is to also keep you wrapped up in it. If I'm surrounded by something, then it, it stops me from leaving as well. He's saying, I am trying to besiege you. What does besiege mean? To absolutely overthrow everything that you are. He wants to come into your life and in the darkest, dark, dark, deep depths of the darkest, darkest, dark of your heart and in your mind and in your life that's in the very back of your mind that nobody knows about except for you and sometimes you think it's so far back there that Jesus has forgotten about it. He's saying I want to besiege you and overthrow that. I want to uproot the things that nobody else knows happened to you except for him. There's very real hurt in the room today. There's very real lost innocence in the room today. That things have happened to you in your past that were outside of your control. And now you have opened and bleeding wounds that have been there for years. He's saying, I want to give you kingdom peace this morning. The type of peace that surrounds you. Yeah, but man, I don't feel peace. It's not about a feeling. It's not, it's, not, it's not about a feeling. It's about knowing that he has you. When we war, how do we war? Is it, is it flipping a coin that day to see if we win or if we lose? You ever approached life that way? I have. Like, you just flip the coin and like, man, I hope it lands on a good day today because I, it just, ugh. No. That's not his promises for you. It's not what his word teaches. It says it rains on the just and the unjust alike, but his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Do, are we promised warfare? Absolutely. But you're, almost, you're always promised victory.
Okay. Can I do something that I do with the youth? Can I do this? Can, like, and I looked over at, at Taylor, and she gave me the look. So this is what we're going to do. If you would, please, everybody stand to your feet. Because I don't like it when I feel heavy. Do you feel heavy this morning? This is way off topic. Do you feel heavy this morning? No? I'm glad you don't. You're Jesus' second cousin. And he was, spent the night at your house and had breakfast with you. I, felt, I feel a little heavy right now. So you know what you do in the middle of heaviness? You can yell or you can scream. This is what I like to do. I like to be silly. When it's, when it's heavy in the house, what do we do? I do everything I can to make people laugh. So this is what we're going to do. On the count of three, I want you to turn in a circle. One, two, three. Let's turn in a circle. <laughs> On the count of three, I want you to turn in a circle the other way. <laughs> I didn't count to three, and you all still turned. (laughs) Why are you doing this? I don't know. It's the foolish things that confound the wise. (laughs) Some of you need to laugh this morning. Some of you need joy that's... I know his peace passes all understanding, but there's a joy that surpasses all understanding too. That it doesn't matter the situation or the circumstance or the money that I have or I don't have, that I can sit in the middle of warfare and laugh. You know why? You know why you can stand in the middle of warfare and you can laugh? Because of what David said. David said, he teaches my hands to war. And my fingers to battle. This is hitting me right now. Thank you, Jesus. You know what the difference between the war and the battle is? The war with his hands is what he did when he would swing a sword. The the battle that he did with his fingers is when he played his harp. It is a marriage of your worship and your warfare that invites him to be the him and the hedge of protection that's around you. That in the middle of the junk, he is there for you. In the middle of the stuff, he is there for you. I have been praying for 20 years for something to happen and it hasn't happened. But in the middle of who he is, there is peace and joy. He wants to besiege you, overthrow you, overtake you, uproot you. The way my generation says it is he wants to wreck you. It's making sense because we're about, well, I'm about to, we're about to talk about what it means to guard, what it, the, the guard. I know we're talking about that right now. What it means when he guards you. I've never seen anybody guard anyone the way that my wife guards our children. Even when our children put themselves in the circumstance, there is always... A mother and a father right there. Okay, you're going to still have to walk through this. You're still going to have to go through this. But I'm going to be right here to make sure that no danger comes to you. He's good this morning. Now, he's good this morning. And his mercy endures forever. Jesus, I need your peace this morning. We need your peace this morning because how many of you would say, like, you ha- I, you don't, you've never really felt it? I haven't felt his peace in a long time. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that lays in bed until 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and with worry and dread and fret? and all? I know I'm not supposed to say this because I'm su- we're supposed to be up here and we're supposed to prevent present a strong front and this and this and this and this and that's the way that I was taught in other places and you always get but man sometimes I don't have it together do you all the time and you think how can I have peace in the middle of this you know where this word was birthed from and what he's been dealing with for months he's been was in was in a hospital room was in a hospital room when we lost our son and we and just said Jesus and she looked at him she goes do you feel the peace that's in this room and it's like yeah (laughs) 
in the middle of the most difficult day of our life, there was a peace that surpassed all understanding. In the middle of the hardest warfares of your life, there is a peace that passes all understand. It is a kingdom peace. It is a violent peace. It is the thing that says, I will not let it come to you. He's, it is, his peace is a hedge of protection that is put around us. But just because there's a hedge of protection that's been put around us doesn't mean that we shouldn't be ready, right? Doesn't mean that we just flippantly live our life and, well, he's got it and I have peace and he fights my battles. Ephesians 6.15 says, and your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Peace is not the permission to just live however you want and think, well, God fights my battles so warfare doesn't exist anymore. No, peace is the empowerment to be ready that when warfare does show up at your door, you know how to handle it. Why? Because we have the example of Jesus to live by. That when a storm came, we said, peace be still. When the demoniac fell at his feet, he said, be free. When the lame and the sick and the blind showed up, he said, go, and your sins are forgiven and you're healed. Faith without works is dead. Power and authority without exercise is dormant. That if it's something we say we have, but we never use, we will lose it. How many of y'all ever been to the gym? Y'all go to the gym at all, ever? Yeah, right? I did. I lost it. I used to be in pretty good shape. I used to be skinny. I used to ride bulls. I, 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 rawr. I ran into one of my bull riding buddies not too long ago. We both lost it. <laughs> Why? Because we stopped using it. Maybe the reason why we don't have peace is because we stopped using it. Maybe the reason why turmoil shows up at your door every day is because we have stepped away from the peace of who he is. Because we like screaming at things and not exercising authority over things. Warfare is not this. Ah! You know what? When we were in Vanguard, we had we warfare walked into the room. There was a young lady that walked up and her hair was all over her face and she was her voice was changing and she was growling and she was saying certain things and you were there. You know what we did? This this is Jesus. This has nothing to do with Pastor Chelsea or Pastor Judge. This is Jesus. We grabbed her, we sat down, and I listened to Chelsea go, Peace be to your mind. Peace replaces torment. The perfect exchange. In Jesus' name, right now, peace to you. And then all of a sudden, we watched her, not screaming at it, not this, but the authority that was put on the inside of us through and by only Jesus and his Holy Ghost was we were able to exercise the authority that he gave to us. And peace was brought into a young girl's mind in a moment. Are there times for the, for the yelling and the screaming and the moaning and the groaning? They absolutely, we did it at the men's night. We were here and we all just laid down and started going after Jesus. There's absolutely a time and a place for that. But it is peace in the battle and out of the battle. It is peace in the storm and out of the storm. Why did he say, oh, ye of little faith? It wasn't because they didn't look at the storm and tell the storm to stop. It was because you're going to be protected even in the middle of the storm. It's not that you couldn't tell the storm to stop. It's that you freaked out that the storm had any authority over you. When we operate in the peace of God, it is not this tranquil feeling all the time, but it is the peace of mind to know that he has established authority and victory inside of my life, no matter the situation and circumstances that are around me. Again, I'm going to ask, is this making sense? Say kingdom peace. Say peace that passes all understanding. Now I'm not I'm I'm really, 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 really gonna try to respect your time today. And I want to give you the uh, 
if I can say it this way, the secret ingredient to peace. Say this whole thing is a recipe. Y'all ever have, y'all have secret ingredients in your recipes? You do? Like, I, I do this little thing to it just to spice it up a little bit. It's nice. Some people like oregano. Some people, oh, my, you ever seen, never mind, I was going to talk about a, a, a Barney episode where Andy Griffith had to eat like 19 bowls of spaghetti and everybody had the secret ingredient in it and it was all oregano. <laughs> I mean, y'all want to know what the secret ingredient to peace is? Nobody? I, I really like call and response, so if you can say something back to me, I, mean, I have a really low self-esteem, so if you don't say something back to me, I, I don't feel like I'm doing a very good job. So somebody say, amen, or be like, how, or do something, huck and buck, do something, my God. Like, how, Jesus, that was it. Come on, wave a hanky at me, do something. I don't like to have to always encourage myself in the Lord. Some of you, that's the problem, is you feel like you're all alone, and you feel like the only thing you've ever had to do is encourage yourself in the Lord, and you feel alone in the kingdom, and nobody's actually there for me. Nobody actually understands what I'm going through, and I constantly am faced with the mirror, and I have to constantly encourage myself, and nobody's actually there for me. Nobody's in my corner. I'm telling you right now, JCIWC is. I can say Jesus is, absolutely, but I'm going to make it a little more personal. Pastor Tim, Pastor Kathy, they're in your corner. Pastor Dave and pa Pastor Heather, they're in your corner. Pastor Aaron and Pastor Becca, they're in Pastor Josh and Pastor Just, we are in your corner. We want the best for you. We want the peace of God to be in your life. We want you to be more than conquerors and overcomers. We want you to be covered in the blood of Jesus. Everything, we're there for you. We want that for you. What is the secret ingredient? We're about to have fun. This, I, got, I got happy all by myself when I started talking about this. You guys ever get happy all by yourself? Like, I'm talking about the kind of happy when nobody else is in the house and you're vacuuming. And for me, if you're my age, you, so I, like, I really, really like the song from the Goofy movie that Powerline sings is Eye to Eye. None of y'all that are over my age even knows what that is. I will be vacuuming and like, I'm like, ah, two eyes, like getting down all by myself in the house, just dancing, going crazy. Why? Because it's fun. Because it's fun. Excuse me. <laughs> I am not doing the dance. I'm going to pop a hip out up here. I ain't doing no sneaking. Are you crazy? <laughs> huh. I almost did the dance and then I thought better about it. I almost did it, but no. Huh. Philippians 4 6 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. See, we, we as, as church really, 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 really know how to pray, right? We really, 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 really know how to petition. God, we know how to pray. We get down and we just, we know how to do that. And we know how to petition God and throw it at his feet and make sure that he knows exactly what we want, exactly how it's going to go, and this is the desire of my heart, and this is what this is, and this is what that is, and Lord, I'm really glad that I got a new car, but I really wished it was a blue one and not a white one, and all of this stuff, right? Or maybe we go a little bit deeper. We know how to throw the petition of our unsaved loved ones at his feet. I don't know about you, but there's been some, there have been some stuff in, in the Sumner household that there is a shifting that has taken place that, have, that, that I don't know if anybody else did, but I got so stinking happy when the shifting took. And when I started, I was, I was in the car by myself when I, when I got the phone call. 
hung up the phone and started going. And I can't even scream. My voice is gone for some reason. I was like, thank you, Jesus. I was losing my mind. Why? Because I was thanking him for something that isn't really complete yet. See, it says prayer and petition with thanksgiving. The key word, with thanks, with. But he hadn't done it yet. That don't, that, that's not a kingdom principle. Hasn't done it yet isn't a king, is, that's not kingdom. That's not kingdom peace. The, the emotion and the feeling and the well-being and the full gank account, that's not why I thank him. I thank him because it is a prerequisite to peace. It is a prerequisite to my answered petition and my answered prayer. It's because, okay, let me see if I can do it this way. Let me give you an example. How many of y'all like Chick-fil-A? I love Chick-fil-A. God, I love I wish they was open on Sundays. Love Chick-fil-A. When you walk up or any place you like, you don't like Chick-fil-A, you're more of a Popeye's person, that's cool too. I kind of am too a little bit. I like the fries better. But you go up, make your order. I want to double deluxe spicy with this and extra barbecue and chick-fil-a sauce and i'm gonna take that asian zing and put it on top of it got the mixtures just perfect and all of that stuff get their ice cream cones and then they ask you would you like anything else and you say no thank you why are you thanking them Because they took your order and you have full faith that within the next five to ten minutes you're going to have what you asked for, right? So why do we treat and have more faith in Chick-fil-A than we do in Jesus? Why, when I put my petition before the Lord, do I beg him and get up without saying thank you for answering my prayer? It says that his prayers do not fall on deaf and dumb ears. Every tear you've ever cried, he's bottled it up. Every word you've ever spoke, he's heard. It is written down in the law. It is written down in heaven. So why have we positioned ourselves to only say thank you and would receive something? Do you want anything else? Yes, and thank you. Yes, and thank you for healing. Yeah, but I'm not healed. No, but you will be. Thank you for deliverance, but depression is still all over me. No, but you will be. I'm thanking him in advance. You know why? Because that's a kingdom concept. It is actually a Hebraic word called Toda. It is a praise that you give him in advance of your miracle ever happening. It is a thanksgiving and it is a worship. And it is a thing that you give to God even if he does or if he doesn't. Because you know that he will. I know it's super cheesy. But when I say and I talk about the praise Toda, I'm like, you give him a Toda and he's like, Ta-da, and he just gives it back to you. <laughs> but then we have to understand that it's not a magic wand. Well, I said thank you, and he didn't do it. Yeah, I, I mean, you ever had that kind of attitude? No, I prayed, and I petitioned, and I said thank you, and then I worshiped, and then I went to the altar, and then I jumped up and down, and then I went to Vanguard, and I did this, and I did that, and I did this, and I did that, and I served, and I did the outreaches, and I barbecue, and I'm going to go play dodgeball with him when we do the, when we do the, I'm going to do all of this stuff, and then all of a sudden, the thing that I've been praying for, he still hasn't done, and you're asking yourself, why, and I'm going to give you a really deep theological answer to that, I don't know, I don't know. He's beyond finding out. So I don't know why he didn't. But I do know I'm so much better off with him, wondering why he hasn't answered a prayer, than leaving him and saying he never did it, so what's the point? Thanksgiving is the secret ingredient to your peace. says don't be anxious about anything 
But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, trade your anxiety for peace. And in all of life's issues, go to the, go into them with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, and giving your request to God. Just doing it. I know when I make my order and I say thank you, it's going to show up. I paid for it. But see, this is the thing. How many of y'all get mad and get upset when you pay for something and it don't show up? That ever frustrates you before? It frustrates me. If I order something from Amazon and it doesn't show up when it says it's supposed to show up, I'm like driving around looking for an Amazon truck and like bust out a Ted light unless he give me what I ordered, right? That makes me mad. You said it was going to be here tomorrow by 10. Well, it's not the Amazon truck's driver's fault that he blew a tire and they had to move all the stuff over and it went to somebody else's thing and now it's a day late. Mad. Why? Why do we let things get to us so hard and so heavy? When it says in Psalms 56, you've kept track of all my wandering and all my weeping. You've stored my many tears in a bottle. Not one will be lost. For they are all recorded in your book of remembrance. The very moment I call to you for Father's help, the tide of the battle turns and my enemies flee. This one thing I know, God is on my side. I trust in the Lord. I praise Him. I tr- what harm could man do to me with God on my side. I will not be afraid of what comes. My heart overflows with praise to God and His promises. I will always trust in Him. So I am thanking you with all my heart, with gratitude for all you've done. I will do everything I've promised you. Now, he's not holding God accountable. He's holding himself. This is, you know, what, where this is, what this, this is Psalms 56. You know what David was in the middle of when this was written? It was when he was in the middle of a Philistine camp and had been taken captive and how it said he drooled all over himself and started to act crazy. This is where the Psalm was written. He was surrounded by his enemy saying, I will keep doing what I promised you. And I'm going to do it with a thankful heart and nothing but praise coming out of my mouth. God, I'm not even asking for you to deliver me, but I'm telling you I'll still do what I promised you I would do. I'm going to keep up my end of the deal. How many times do we approach God that way? I know that this convicted me when I started reading this because it has been kind of few and far between for me of me saying, God, I'll keep my promise to you and not constantly trying to keep God in check about him keeping his promise to me. This, this, this was a two-way street right here. This altar where I met him was not just a commitment that he made to me, but it was a commitment that I made to him. We have our own side of the deal to keep up with. That's why, yes, absolutely, peace is a thing that can, you can have but warfare is absolutely promised to you and we cannot retreat when it comes knocking on our door though a thousand may fall on one side and ten thousand in my right hand it shall not come nigh my dwelling but I've said this before but it did and it knocked my door down and in the middle of it knocking the door down as soon as the door fell the enemy had to come face to face with Jesus. And he said, what are you doing here? You know this ain't allowed. It says, when I call on, David said, when I call on him, he's surrounded by the Philistines, having to act crazy so they don't kill him. 
He said, when I call on you, Lord, my enemies flee in all different directions. Were they fleeing? No. But the peace to say and the assurance to say, with thanksgiving, even though my situation on the outside does not look like it's changing at all, I know the greater one lives on the inside of me. He's never forsaken his righteous. His seed has never been begging bread. I know this is a little bit different today. Even the atmosphere is a little bit different, and that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. It kind of, it, if I'm being honest, it kind of shakes you a little bit as a minister because you think you're about to talk about Thanksgiving and everybody's going to, we're going to get have a party and it's going to be fun. But then what happens when what you even as a minister think is going to happen doesn't happen? Like the announcement video this morning. I don't know why there was one minute and one second on the announcement video, but there was. Did it look unprofessional? Yeah. Did it make me feel sick to my stomach in the back? Yeah. Was it excellent? No. Is it irritating? Yeah. Did I want to be like, wait, what in the world? What did he do? How come it didn't transfer right? Aaron, you did something wrong. That's what I wanted to do. He's going to edit this. Ha, ha, hi, Aaron. Um, <laughs> Pastor Aaron. <laughs> Sometimes it is what it is. It is what it is because he is who he is. And his promises are what they are. Is this making sense this morning? Are we, are we, are we in a good mood today? Are we going to go home? Are we going to be happy? We're going to be full of joy. We're going to have a good day today. I want to have a good day today. I want to have a good day tomorrow. I want to go out to my truck on Tuesday and replace the water pump, and it just be fine. <laughs> but sometimes it's not. And if I can do this, I'm going to do this. Because I feel like this is how some people feel. Silence. This is what I feel. Where most of us are at in the building today. I wanted this word to be delivered. I wanted to deliver this word the way that I felt it. And this is the way that I feel it now. Is that it's... Oh, I got to get up tomorrow, man. Oh, I got to get up tomorrow and do this all over again. Feel that way? Because if I don't, it don't get done. Ah, oh, why can't they just make right choices? And why do I care so much? Man, I wish I could flip the switch. Why do I hate people so much and love them so much at the same time? Why do I want to run away and run to them at the same time? Why do I want to kick them out of my house and at the same time do their laundry? Why is peace not really a part of my life? I feel so broken. And I feel so lost. Why couldn't they have just made right choices? Why can't I just make right choices? Feels like I want to, and then I don't. 
But it's like, I want to do right, and I want to live holy, and I want to live separate, and I want to live for him. But then I don't, and I don't know how to get control over my own self because the turmoil of my mind continually beckons me back to the thing that gives me the false security of peace. This world and the ruler of it will give you a security and a peace that feels like you're being wrapped up in a warm blanket until it's time to pay back. And then he comes knocking. And that warm, fuzzy feeling that I gave you when you turned to just a little bit of a drink. It's not, we're out of town. It doesn't matter. It's okay. <laughs> I can do that. I'm here to tell you that there is a call that the Holy Ghost, that is being resounded in the heavenly realms and he's calling for those to come out from among him and I really truthfully honestly believe that the Nazarites are rising up again do you feel heavy this morning and it's okay to say yes yeah do you need peace this morning if you need peace this morning raise your hand I need real peace. I need peace to come in and like just change something for me. And it, not the emotion of peace. I don't need an emotion because emotions are fleeting. I need the real, legitimate, tangible peace of God to come in and really change my atmosphere. Really change who I am. See, peace isn't something that I, I can walk up to you and slap oil on your head and say, peace be imparted. No, peace is a reality of his word that you have to step into. Peace is something that you have to walk in. Peace is something that you have to embrace. Peace is something that you have to yield the warfare that you've been fighting in your own, with your own volition, and you yield all of that to him, and then we get to walk in his peace. When he is the one that besieges us, then we get to be surrounded and hemmed in by who he is. And then that's how we have his peace. If I could have some, somebody come, please, that'd be great. I know today's been different and it hasn't been very long. But that's okay. And, and it's okay because <laughs> if this word wasn't for anybody else, it was something that, that, that the Sumner house needed. I need peace. I need real, we need real peace. Y'all need some real peace? If you need real peace in your life, would you please stand to your feet? That's a lot of turmoil. With nobody, you know, with everybody looking around. Huh. I want you, for those of you that are standing in the first few rows, I want you to turn around. I want you to look. Just look. Every single one of these people said, man, I need some real peace in my life. I need, I need something to change. You guys feel that? You guys feel in, in some of your lives, it's like, if it don't change, I'm done? If, if it doesn't change, I'm done. That's where a lot of people are. If it does not change, I am finished. I am going to go do my own thing. I'm going to be... I, it's not that I don't love the Lord. I love the Lord. I'm going to just do my thing.
peace is in the room and it's available to you. If, if, if in the room today, and I'm going to raise my hand when I say this because it's something that knocks on my door on occasion. If you're struggling with depression today, and that's a thing that comes and tries to beat down your door. If you would, and if it, don't, don't take, it, it doesn't mean you're less than. It doesn't mean that, well, I, I it doesn't, no. It's a very real thing, and I believe that it is an attack of the enemy on the the generations of the earth today is depression and is anxiety and is fear. It's very, 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 very real. The amount of students that we, that Pastor Chelsea and I talk to that, that are faced with legitimate depression. Adults and men, grown men that I have talked to, they are, they are fighting depression. And they don't know where it's coming from. They don't know why. Because on the outside, everything looks good. Even on the inside, everything kind of looks good. Like the, It's not that the marriage is falling apart. It's not that the bank accounts are empty. It's not, it's not that I... It's I just don't know why I am the way that I am. If that's you this morning, and fear, depression, and anxiety have been trying to rob your peace, if that's you, lift your hand. Look, all like, across the room, Across the room. Me too. Me too. When everything started going bad in the last couple of days, not, not everything going bad, just vehicles being vehicles and just giving me problems. It's not, it's not an attack of Satan. It's just vehicles being vehicles. But what happens is when life just happens and we don't respond to it properly, it gives the enemy a foothold to come in and whisper things into your ear. And so what happened is as things, life was happening to us in the summer house, I wasn't responding to the issues the way that I should have been responding to the issues. And then what it did is it didn't open a door, but it cracked a window so that I could hear the enemy of depression and that spirit start whispering in my ear again, you're not good enough. If you were a better man, you would have more reliable vehicles. If you, were, if, you, if you knew what you could have done and all the mistakes that you've made across you, you're in this position now because you're worthless. That's what the enemy was whispering to me. Sweat dripping down off of my forehead as the truck died and I'm trying to push it and have to call my wife out. It's 11.30 at night. We're on the side of the road. We're pushing a stupid ram charger up against them. We're sitting there thinking, what kind of man are you? laid my head down on the pillow and felt Jesus say and I felt the Father say you're my son that's what kind of man you are you are my son it's not easy right now but you can still have peace because you are my son and you live in my kingdom and when you live in my kingdom there is an there is a militant garrison that surrounds you that keeps you from leaving my peace and keeps the invasion of the thing that wants to spill your peace to come in he is a good father that if you ask him for peace he doesn't hand you warfare the bible says when i Ask for, pe- for bread, he doesn't hand you a scorpion, does he? No, he's a good father. Okay, now with everybody's head bowed and their eyes closed. Today in the room, you might be saying to yourself, man, I don't know Jesus. I've never really had a relationship with him the way 
I'm seeing, I've, you could even say, I've been to church my whole life and been a part of this forever, but I don't know that I've ever ha actually had a real relationship with Him. Or maybe you have had a real relationship with Him, but just because of issues and circumstances and things that have happened, you've, you've kind of walked away from it and drifted away from it. See, I don't believe that He ever leaves us, but I do believe that we can walk away from Him knowingly or unknowingly. If that's anybody in the building today and you say, I just want a real relationship with who He is. If that's you, could you just throw your hand up real quick so I can see? Is there anybody in the room today? Thank you. So this is what we're going to do. I don't usually do the repeat after me prayer stuff, but I think that's... Let's do it like this. All of us raised our hand and said we want a peace. All of us stood up and said we want a peace. If that's you and you did stand up, I would invite you to come forward real quick. We're going to do this as a church collectively together. We're going to have some body ministry right now because there, some of you feel like you're alone and you're not. So if that's you, just go ahead and come forward. You said you wanted peace? Come forward. We're going to work. To the, we're going to do this thing together. A lot of people need peace. Kingdom peace. So this is what I want us to do. I want everybody in the front. I want you guys to come around. Come on over here. I want you to look to your right and I want you to look to your left. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with doing this. It doesn't make you less than and it doesn't make you weak. It's probably the most bold thing that you can do is in the presence of your peers saying up, standing up and walking forward. I need some help. I need peace in my life because it feels like it's not really where it should be. I want you to go ahead and take the hand of the person next to you. us to do this together. Say, Jesus, right now, I ask that you would search me. Search my heart and search my mind. And Lord, I repent if there's anything in me that does not measure up to your word. I ask that you would wash me in your blood that makes me white as snow. Lord, I open my heart for your peace to come in. For your kingdom peace to come in. Lord, we're grateful for you. We thank you for answered prayers and answered petitions. We may not see it now, but we know our order's on the way. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood and for your peace. We yield ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.